Welcome to the Probate Realtor Show, your one source for selling and buying real estate through trust and probate. Hear directly from the best attorneys and trusted advisors on how executors and administrators navigate the probate process in and out of court. Being a personal representative or successor trustee can be a daunting task, and often beneficiaries don't have a clear plan. Let us help you make the right decision for your clients, your family, and your legacy. And now, here's your host, the probate realtor himself, Matias Baker Mazzucci. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Today, we are talking to a professional organizer, Dina Braverman, but she's a lot more than that. Dina, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to have you. And uh, since this show is geared toward trust and probate and estate planning, um, I wanted to give, de- delve right into a scenario that a lot of our audience find themselves in. It's like they inherit a home um, and they, or they find themselves having to sell a home, which is full of stuff to the brim. People have lived in this home for 40, 50 years, and then they call somebody like you, and please walk us through the, through the process. I think the very first step is obviously walking through the house. You've got to get a, a good idea of what's in the house, what, what the contents are. You know, a lot of people want to believe that the contents of a house that they're left have a lot of value. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes there is value. And sometimes it's just sentimental value. So we're there to be honest and and manage their expectations as to what they can expect. So that is my first my first priority is to manage expectations. So we do the walkthrough and we figure out what's there. Obviously, they are interested in some kind of sale. They want to make some value. They want to get some value out of the content, right? Mm-hmm. So we have to figure out, is there enough value? Is there enough quantity? Mm -hmm. Is there enough quality? If you're going to have an estate sale, there are thousands of people in three days walking through that property. There must be enough um, quantity for people to walk away with things, right? So, Mm -hmm. you know, there has to be a various, various kinds of items, everything from Tupperware to artwork to furniture, to picture frames. It's, it's, it's an entire estate. It can't be just the furniture. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes what'll happen is heirs will walk through a house and say, you know what? I can use all of this for my home. I want mm-hmm. this for my home. So we don't really want to do a walkthrough until the heirs have figured out what they want to take away. Okay, we want that's to very good. It's gonna be left behind. Okay. Because that's what the value is going to be based on. What is left behind? Once they figure out what they want, we'll go and we'll assess and we'll help them, we'll guide them through the next steps. Sometimes it is an estate sale. Sometimes it's just sending those valuable pieces that are left behind to auction. Okay. Sometimes it might be not enough for auction, but it might be good for a consignment store. So over the years, How do you develop the ability to determine what is of value, what is not of value? Is that something that comes with expertise? You know, that's a really good question. You know, after doing it for many years, obviously, you you just come upon things that you see time and time again. You've researched it time and time again. You've priced it time and time Mm -hmm. again. However, there are those times when you come across a painting or a sculpture or a, a piece of jewelry, and you just don't know what it is, or you don't know what the value is. You have to know what you don't know. And at that point, you have to bring in the troops. You have to bring in other resources to help you figure out what the value is. And that is really important to know what you don't know. Okay. So yeah, we'll bring in other people to help us put a value on it. Sometimes it's an appraisal. Sometimes it's simply somebody who knows better than we do about the value. Got it. And what about as you go through the process, as you go through through everything that, you know, it's inside the house, what do you do with with personal belongings that like, you know, somebody's taken every, uh, you know, a, a hair is taking everything that they can, but they're still left some things behind that they forgot. Like, how do you spot the things that are important, that are important, like personal documents, et cetera? What do you do when you when you identify those things? 
So uh, in going through, let's just hypothetically say it is an estate sale or mm -hmm. a sale of any kind. The first thing that we really want to do is go through everything to make sure that nothing of personal value is being sold. For instance, okay. family photographs, albums, right. stuff like that. We will put that aside and let the family determine what they want to do with it. Because believe it or not, in an estate sale, people do buy family pictures. We don't know oh. why. Sometimes they use it for arts and crafts or for, you know, I don't know. They use it for different kinds of reasons, but they do buy personal family photos that are not theirs. Right. The other thing is we look for documentation. So um, anything that has to do with paperwork, perhaps a filing cabinet, those are off limits. Okay. We right. will go through that before any type of sale to make sure that all paperwork is removed, uh, mm -hmm. given to the family or given to the probate attorney, maybe given to the family CPA but those documents are not on site at the time of any sale. Got it. Got it. Okay. That makes total sense. Now, what about the, after the sale is complete, there are things of value that have been sold. Um, and there's a lot of other things that maybe um, need a new home or what is the difference between that, which gets thrown away and that's what gets, which, which, which gets donated. So at the end of every estate sale, and I'm just talking estate sales here. Mm -hmm. There are instances where an in estate sale, as I mentioned, they're not it's possible. not doable, right. So we would do the same thing in a clear out, which mm -hmm. is where an estate sale is not possible and an estate sale, because at the end of an estate sale, there is always 10 to 15% left over. We never know what it's going to be. We right. never know why. It's the people that are buying. It's the, it's the, what it is sometimes. At the end of the day, at the end of the sale, we will donate whatever possible, whenever possible. So okay. we'll go in after the sale or not, and we'll pack up everything that has value for an estate for a donation. So that could be everything in the kitchen, that could be clothing, that mm -hmm. could be home decor, sometimes it's appliances. But as a professional organizer, we have to know what can go where because not okay. every charity takes everything. Right. Like Habitat for Humanity won't take clothing. Goodwill won't take appliances. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of, you have to know who you're dealing with and, and distribute accordingly. And we do just that. Um, especially post COVID, a lot of charities no longer take certain things. So, you know, anything that is ripped, soiled, stained, broken, missing a piece, mattresses, mm -hmm. box springs, large pieces of furniture. So we have to know where, what to do with those items. At the end of that process, anything that cannot be donated will then go to trash. Okay. But not always landfill. And that is an important, um, you know, point to bring up is that landfill is true trash. Right. But when we bring whatever we bring to trash, there is a recycling process. Okay. Metal is separated from paper. Paper is separated from, you know, maybe expired food, right? right? So we do try to even recycle responsibly. Very nice. There is a process. So in a sense, there are layers that start, they start from, well, first of all, it sounds to me like you always put the interest of the estate first. So um, it starts from what can we sell and what proceeds can we generate for the estate? That's Correct. like the highest top. Yes. Then below that, we have, okay, we can't, what we cannot sell, what can we donate? Um, what are they, um, obviously when you donate something, there are, there are benefits to the estate to a certain degree. Uh, I'm sure you document everything where it goes and, 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 and what, um, and what it's, it's sent to. And then below that we have, what well, can we recycle? So everything that gets recycled. And then the last step is the dumping, right? That's correct. We always do try to find value in every situation, whether it's somebody just passed away, somebody's moving and no longer wants to take their stuff with them. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're moving overseas and can't. Um, we always try to find value. We always try to sell what we can. We donate what we can sell. Mm -hmm. The clients, the estate do get the donation receipt. Mm -hmm. 
then the then the hauling begins. And all of this is done in one day. So after an estate sale, the final clear out, which is the donations and the and the trash, that all happens in one day. Got it. Okay. So what is the speed? How long does it take you to do, you know, I have, you know, been in the business of trust and probate. I see certain properties that are filled to the brim with things, some valuable, some not. Um, what is the length, you know, if somebody's not in a terrible rush and wants to give you the time to do your thing, what is the general time frame um, for it's for the for the process that we discuss first, which is you know, the estate sale, the 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 donation the recycling right. and the what is usually a time frame you work with so i prefer more time than less time but that means that the heirs or the people living in the house have to be out sooner than they would they would like to be okay so i it's usually 7 to 10 days okay and if it's really full i mean really full we want 2 weeks because okay you've got to get in there and do the setup after the setup, pulling everything out of the cabinets and the cupboards and the drawers and, you know, making it look like a boutique, making it look like a store for people to come shop in, we then mm -hmm. have to research and price those items. Okay. Then we have to advertise and host the sale. The sale is usually three days. We usually do the sales Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Okay. Sunday's a not a great day for a state sale. So, and then Sunday we leave the day open for people to come and pick up the items that they bought. Sometimes it's like, you know, big pieces of furniture and they have to get a truck and people mm -hmm. to help them remove those items. We usually leave Sunday as that kind of day. And then Monday usually is the clear out and it is a one day process. Got it. So, so around seven to 10 days. Got it. So conversely, let's say the scenario is like, Dina, we already took out everything we want. This is all, we don't want anything. We don't need any proceeds. This is like, we need, there is a reverse mortgage on the house. We need to get these on the market as soon as possible. How fast do you usually move? Like how fast can you move on a process like that on a clear out? Okay. So if there's no estate sale, we can do it, you know, again, one to two days, depending on the volume. If, it. if it's, if it's eight trucks, I could do it in one day. If it's 19 trucks, probably two days. Got it. Um, but we, we really move very quickly and we can still, we still do the same process. Obviously, sale is a little more difficult, but mm -hmm. we do try to find value and pull those items where we can, you know, sell them. And then the rest is donation and or trash. So, you know, the sale part is a little bit more difficult when I have one to two days, but we can mm -hmm. still do it in one to two days. Got it. Okay. You know, yep. and 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 the the thing is is really when you have a probate estate and you want to get the, the property on the market as soon as possible, as soon as you know you have to let somebody like me know. Got it. Because there's a lot of coordination. There's a lot of moving pieces. You know, there's not only the donation pickup and not only the trash removal, sometimes they're shredding. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's toxic waste. So paint and chemicals in the garage. There's a lot of different companies that need to show up. And yes, we work as the quarterback. We're facilitating and coordinating it. But we have to work with these other companies that have to be available as well. So you take care of that as well. Like toxic everything. waste, you take care of that. 100%. Okay. Everything. Great. One so, stop shop. So you offer peace of mind, essentially. You're saying, you know, like, look, you could try and do this thing on your own. But, you know, if you have better things to do with your time, please, you know, go, go to a professional. And, and, and in my experience, in my years of experience, people who do hire a professional have a much easier time, um, you know, going through the process. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will handle everything. And also, Mateus, is that if the if there's heirs or family members mm -hmm. that want a piece of furniture, for instance, from the estate, we will also handle getting that moved and or shipped to them, depending on. Oh, very nice. So we'll handle that as well. Right. So the process of valuation is a set. You know, like if somebody has, like, look, this is an antique, you know, piece of furniture or a grand piano, and I think it's worth a hundred thousand um, dollars. You help them reconcile, and maybe it may be worth that much, or maybe it's you know it's worth like you know ten thousand. So you help you help through that process, you know, to to get the people who have expertise, or are you letting the the, the buyers decide? Like, look, no, you know, no, 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 oh, no. Okay, but, no, and that's an important point. The buyers don't decide, and the sellers don't decide. In other words, okay. the family cannot decide. This piano, for instance, is worth ten thousand dollars. 
What they can do, however, mm -hmm. is they can put a reserve. Let's okay. hypothetically say that they have a family heirloom and it's a piano. And unless they can get $10,000 for that piano, they don't want to sell it. Okay. We will put a reserve on it and we'll check in with them and say, look, we got an offer for eight. Are you willing to go with eight or are you stuck on 10? Because at it. the end of the day, if it's 10,000 and they're stuck on 10,000 and I can't get it, they're going to be stuck with the piano. Yeah, yeah right? that makes they can sense. usually put a reserve on three items, give or take three items, because after that, it becomes a lot to remember. We're in the middle of a three day sale, which mm -hmm. is fast and furious. There's right. hundreds, if not thousands of people walking through that property and it goes fast. And so right. more than that becomes problematic. That makes total sense. That makes total sense. Okay, let's talk about some of the other services you offer because I, I find it fascinating. And in particular, you know, these this are very appropriate to, to what I do, like staging, for instance. You mentioned, you mentioned when we briefly had a conversation earlier that, um, that you also do th things such as staging with the furniture that are, that are already in the house. How does that process work? So off, when you guys want to sell a house, and there's, let's just say that the, the owners of the house have passed away. Mm -hmm. The heirs want to sell. Typically, in my experience, and I can only speak to my experience, the heirs don't want to spend $10,000 a month to stage a property. Right. They usually don't have that kind of money. They're waiting for the sale of the property to get mm -hmm. that money. Right. So what we do is we go in and we make the property look as great as we can with mm -hmm. what is on site. We don't bring in furniture. We don't bring in accessories. We work with what's in the house. And that sometimes means removing some items from the house because mm -hmm. it's too much. Right. Um, you know, setting this house up a little differently than maybe it is and making it look good so that you guys can go in and take your marketing photographs and mm -hmm. get the property on the market. So less is more, right? We take away the personal photographs. We, we clear the counters. We make the closets uh, look like they have, like people can walk in and see the depth, the height of the, of the storage space because people look at that when they want to buy a property. Very nice. We, we, make, we make it look great for the photographs. And it's not as expensive as bringing in all of these other pieces and accessories and furnishings. That makes total sense. That makes sense. Um, the last aspect of what I know you do is organizing. Now, this is outside of, can be part of the realm of, of, of probate, uh, uh, but can you give me a little bit of a, um, just a rundown, a brief rundown of, of what organizing entails and who needs organizing usually? Sure. So the organizing, by the way, is, is, is utilized throughout every process, whether it's clearing, Mm -hmm. Right, because we have to organize all these people to get right. together. Whether it's estate uh, planning for the estate sale, which is again organizing the house so that it looks like a boutique. Right, it's part of everything that we do. It's the foundation of everything we do, and and what we organize in a, in a scenario that doesn't involve an estate sale or a clear out. It's basically everything from a linen closet to a garage to an attic and everything in between. We help people decide what they want to keep what they want to donate, what they want to trash, and we facilitate all of those processes. We help them make those decisions so that the place gets better organized or organized. Um, I say better organized because, you know, people think that they're organized, but it could always be better. Um, so we'll remove the donations, we'll remove the trash, we'll put systems in place that are easy for them to maintain, uh -huh. you know, Sometimes it's, it's uh, through labeling. Sometimes it's putting like with like. Sometimes it's getting rid of the excess right. and figuring out how they can best maintain it without us. Organizing mm -hmm. is not something that is done once, once every 10 years. It's something that is on, it's a process and it's mm -hmm. something that needs to be done on an ongoing basis. Otherwise, it will build up and become overwhelming and stressful. So we encourage our clients to maintain their systems. If they can't, we offer maintenance programs where we go in once a week, once a month, quarterly, or even annually, because everybody needs it. It's hard. It's hard to do on your own, right? Yeah, it's that hard. makes sense. It's hard to make decisions on your own about this stuff. And, you know, sometimes people have 
trouble letting go. They might have spent a lot of money, but it was a mistake. They might have received a gift from somebody and they feel guilty about letting it go. We help them through the process. I love it. There is an element of therapy in it. It's there absolutely is. it's absolutely true and it's absolutely wonderful. There is, you know, I I used to be a very neat person, very, very organized in my place. And now, you know, I have four children. So my place is sometimes doesn't look as organized as it should be. And I have to say, it is it affects my mind. It affects my mind. I know some people can function well in disorganized environments. For me, it's it's relatively difficult. So so right. and yeah. being better organized really just means that no matter whether it's in your home or your office, it just means better efficiency, better right. productivity, less stress. Um, everybody feels better when their system's in place. And I will say this, everybody, and I mean me included, me with all of my organizing expertise, we all hit a brick wall someplace. Maybe it's the right. paperwork. Maybe it's the, the bathroom. Maybe it's, I don't know, the kids' toys. We yeah. all hit a brick wall somewhere. It doesn't hurt to get another person's input to help bring it to the next level. You know, makes sense. It makes total it's, sense. Yeah, it's now, just another service. It's just a. It's just more help. Yeah, exactly. And 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 especially in things like in, in areas such as this, I think it's it's very important to have to have support when you need it. Um, Tina, let's talk about you. I like this. Uh, I like the subject. Let's talk specifically about you. Um, okay. Tell us where you're from. So I'm originally from New York, as you can tell by this accent. What part of New York? Um, I'm from Queens. New Queens, York. okay. Um, one of the boroughs. Uh, moved out here, oh gosh, about 45 years ago, believe it or not. So you, you were know, a one year old. Yeah, you know, you, you could take the girl out of New York, but you can't take the girl <laughs> out of the girl. So I moved here 45 years ago, and I went um, pretty much right into the legal industry. I worked for 30 okay. years working for attorneys. And so much of my organizing really started in the office environment, in the corporate environment. And so we do a lot of specializing in paperwork, Got it. Um, implementing filing systems, you know, knowing the IRS retention guidelines helping attorneys figure out what documents they need for the courts, for the CPAs, for the final accounting, for the court, for the administration of an estate, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we do a lot of that. Um, after about 30 years in the legal industry, I decided that I needed a change. Mm -hmm. I thought I would take my personal crazies and my corporate expertise and skills, and I became an organizer. And we did start in the office organizing uh, arena. Did you see we, somebody do it? Was there somebody, have you, have you heard of somebody who was an organizer? Because it's not like a profession no, that. I didn't. Actually, a friend of the family actually said, you should do that professionally. And there's actually, oh, and there's okay. actually an association and it's called NAPO, which is the National Association of Professional Organizers. And I attended a meeting and I thought, this is my people. Oh, wow. And, and that was it. I hung out a shingle and thought, Let's see how this goes and started with offices, very quickly expanded into residential, then very quickly um, expanded into estate sales because every single one of my clients that was downsizing wanted to find value in their possessions. Mm. So I joined up with an estate sale company. I learned the ropes mm. and, then you know, kind of uh, just took the ball and ran with it. And then, of course, as you know, at the end of every estate sale, there's stuff left over. I had to figure out how to get rid of right. that stuff. So there we have it. You know, 13 years later, we, you know, we are now. So you made the connection with the people who yeah. come and hold the things away and, and et cetera, et cetera. I just wanted my services, our services to be of more value with each and every client that we took on. We wanted mm -hmm. to be able to be, be of service and not have them have to worry about all the other things that that entailed, whether it be moving or an estate sale, because we do a lot of relocations. Right. So we help people, you know, downsize and declutter prior to a move. We help them move. We help them unpack. So we facilitate every one of those aspects of the move. They can go to the movies. They can go to the movies. They can go to dinner. They can go on vacation. We will handle it all. And when so they you coordinate out, the movers too. You everything. work with the movers. If somebody, okay, so somebody, this is a good, you, you, word, you use the word downsizing. I love that because, you know, that happens. Somebody, 
family home, five bedroom, six bathroom. They're like, right. okay, that's it. You know, we're going to buy a nice condo on the beach. You know, the kids are, are gone and you can help in that process too. Right. They don't, you don't want to pack and move all the things that you don't want to, that you don't need or want because all right. of that costs a lot of money, right? Yeah. The packing costs money, the moving costs money, the unpacking costs money. So yeah. we like to do that at the front end. And then right. at the back end, after the move has happened, we unpack in one to two days, again, depending on volume, as if they've never lived anywhere else. Everything will be mm. accessible, functional. It will look good. It will feel good. Um, and it's done. All they have to worry about is hanging hanging things on the walls, which we don't do until a week afterwards. We like them to get, because sometimes people like to move things around after they get situated. Sure. You don't want to make holes in the wall unless they know that the furniture is going to be where it's, where it is. And we can always send by somebody back to hang something if they want. So, Very nice. Yeah. But they what walk great- in, the beds are made, the coffee station's ready, everything is done. Very nice. What a great service you provide. Thank you. No, and thank no you for more sharing. boxes, no more paper. I love it. Yeah, I love right. it. Beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up with uh, with something that I love to do. I have a list of thirty questions that are numbered one to thirty, okay. and I would like for you to pick a number, and I will ask you one of those questions. These are these are questions that have uh, um, that are taken from um, uh, talk shows. How many different. questions do I get? Uh, we can do one or two. All right, number okay, one. Pick- you pick number one? Okay, number first one. time. Yes. Um, what's the best thing that happened to you recently? The best thing that happened to me recently? Wow, that's a big question. Um, I mean, I think that I'm just, I feel very blessed. I feel like my my life is finally at a place that is comprehensively, if there is such a word, in sync. Everybody's good. happy. Everybody's happy. The business is good. You know, life yeah, is exactly. good. I, I'm in a really good place. I love it. I love it. All right. Pick another number. Seven. Seven. Lucky what, seven. Yeah. What sound or noise do you love? The sound of a waterfall. Okay. Rain. Yes. Very nice. Okay. Very let's do one thing. Yeah, you find that soothing. Good. Let's do one more. Uh, one to 30? Yeah. Two. 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 What are you excited about right now? I'm excited about my future, the future of my business, the future of my love life, um, just just everything that my future holds. I mean, I I embrace what's about to happen. And I embrace that I believe that a lot of it is manifest destiny. I believe you create your future and you create your happiness and you create your life. It's your responsibility to make it a good place. And And I own it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing this beautiful glow that you have. Uh, with us today. Um, Thank you. Before I let you go, a very important thing. Anybody who needs a professional organizer, who needs to downsize, all this information will be in the description of the episode. Can you please tell us as well, for somebody who's just listening to the podcast, um, how do the, how do we get a hold of you? How does the audience get a hold of you? So you can always call me. I'm always available. My phone number is 310 560 Five zero six zero, easy. It's an easy number. Or you can reach me, and this is a long one, but my email is Dina D I N A at mm-hmm. organizing concepts and designs dot com, which is okay. the name of the company. And you can always reach out through the website, which is again organizing concepts and designs dot com. And Wonderful. I'm the one who answers the phone, so you'll always get me. Oh, very nice. Good, good. Yeah. Well, Dina, thank you so much for joining us. It's been truly a pleasure to have you. Thank um, you, Matthias. I love being a guest. Okay. Thank you. And we will. Um, I will see everybody in the next episode. Thank you, everybody, from jo- for joining us. Have Bye. a lovely day. Thank you.